Welcome back to Surviving and Thriving, where we share with you the things that we have learned as we have transitioned our family from struggling to survive disease to thriving, right? Smack dab in the midst of it. In the hopes that something that we share with you will help you, enlighten you, and encourage you as you transition your family from struggling to survive disease to thriving, right? Smack dab in the midst of it. There are, if you have you ever noticed that if you look up all the preventative things to do for almost every single health issue, every single disease out there, there the preventative measures are the exact same thing for every disease out there, right? Almost every disease out there. And then if you look at how to overcome, how to maintain, the things to do to get better while you're dealing with illnesses, disease, almost everyone out there is the same exact thing as the things that you do to prevent it. Have you ever looked that up? Have you ever noticed that? That thing always baffles me. So let's go over what those things are, right? To prevent disease, right? And even to maintain and overcome while you're in it. The same things are this. You need good sleep. You've got to get good sleep. Because during certain hours of the night, starts around like 2 o'clock, between certain hours of the night is when your body starts its restorative processes. That's when healing starts to take place in your body. So if you're constantly up, not getting good sleep, sleeping at the wrong hours, doing all these things and pushing it to the end, your body is not getting that opportunity to recharge itself. Okay? It's going to do healing between this hour and this hour. If you're jacking those hours up, your body's not going to be able to do the things that it needs to do to rebuild all the wear and tear that you're putting on your body, to have to deal with all the toxins and the chemicals you're putting in your body from all the processed foods and sweets and caffeine and all that good stuff. Well, tastes good, but it ain't good for you, right? Stuff that you're putting in your body, it's, meant you're, it's missing that. And if you're losing out on that opportunity, you're not doing your body any justice. You're doing it a great disservice, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing that... Um, you might hear on there and it's not in the order no particular order I'm just giving it to you how they come into me right is you got to have good water you have to flush out your body you need to be able to go do number one and number two you got to go potty right you got to go to the bathroom and be able to flush out all the toxins and the bad things that are in your body and the majority of the toxins that people are getting in their body that is caused um, that causes disease you guys is from the chemicals that they put in food. It's from the food coloring, it's from the stuff they put in there, the flavorings, all the processing that they're doing in the food to make it tasty for you. And that's the number one thing that's really causing a lot of these mishaps in our bodies. And you have to drink water because your body, your organs, your liver, your kidneys, your organs are flushing out all of those toxins, trying to deal with all of that stuff, your digestive system. And if you're not drinking enough water and getting good, healthy water in, right, you're not going to be able to flush that stuff out. And the longer it stays in the body, the more exposure you have, you have to it, the more your body starts to absorb that fat stuff and it begins to cause problems. There is a product that I used to use. It's two products and I used to put it together. It's MSG and citric acid. It's a really good thing. It helps cleanse the blood of a lot of stuff. It's kind of like, um, you know when you go camping, if you're out there and you're getting water out the stream, you want to put your um, MSG and stuff in there so that it can clean the water as a purifier. That is a really good thing. You need to look at it. Talk to a naturopathic doctor. You need to take it a certain way because if you don't, it'll make you kind of sick. It's not because it's doing something bad, but it's because it's cleaning your body too fast. So there's a process and a way that you need to take it. I'm not going to talk to you about it now. You talk to your naturopathic doctor about it, okay? Um, because that's who helped me through mines, and it helped me a lot. And it has helped a lot of people. In fact, my naturopathic doctor had leukemia, and it actually um, helped cure him of uh, leukemia. So you need to really... Um, learn about that that's some good stuff but good pure water and I'm not going to start talking to you about the difference between going to a water place and buying filters and all of that you do you do your research find out what's best for you and your family and you do that for your pure water but tap water I would stay away from so there's a lot of um, good that come out of drinking a lot of water you need to drink a lot of water a lot of people don't drink water they drink soda 
they drink Kool-Aid with a lot of sugar in it all day long and bypass water. You need pure, clean water, not um, teas or coffee. You need pure, clean water, which brings me to number three. We're going to talk about caffeine. A lot of caffeine, people need to either limit their intake of caffeine or do away with caffeine all together. Number four, alcohol. Either need to limit your alcohol or do away with alcohol all together. And I'm going to leave it at that because people get mad at you when you talk about their food, their caffeine, and their alcohol. So we, we're we going to leave that. You do your research and do what you want to do with that, okay? So then where are we at? Number five, exercise, right? Because that exercise helps you to detox your body. When you sweat, you're detoxing. It helps to get um, circulation going because every aspect of your body needs blood. And a lot of times when you start dealing with issues that stem from an organ, it's because the circulation to that organ is not where it needs to be. And exercise helps you to get that circulation. You got to move them joints, keep your body flexible. I've talked about that in a lot of other videos on some of my first Friday videos and some of these regular Thursday videos. So you can go back and look at all of that and, and, and see that for yourself. But exercise is highly important. You got to keep your heart healthy, keep that circulation and that flow going. And a lot of diseases deal with poor circulation or causes poor circulation. And that exercise will help alleviate a lot of symptoms, keep you Keep you feeling spry, keep your vitality there, keep you mobile and flexible and all that good stuff, right? So number six, the next thing is good foods. Oh my gosh, good foods is so important. It's amazing how many people don't eat vegetables. Even in this, you know, faddish time of being vegan and all this other kind of stuff, people still don't eat a lot of vegetables and you need vegetables for life. You need living food to put living things in your body dead foods put dead things in your body right so if you're eating you know bread out the store that's been processed that's some of the worst things that you put you can put in your body versus like if you're eating ezekiel bread which is a sprouted bread that has a lot of life in it if it's you know broccoli it has life in it if it's ah i don't know i don't eat a lot of processed food if it's um i do know but i gotta think about it if it's um cookies there's not nothing living in it there's no living foods in it it's all processed foods it's all chemicals it's all um a lot of fake dead stuff there's no life in it. dead in produces dead life in produces life right so life in life out dead in dead out real simple math you know it's it's an easy thing to do you, it, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure it out and out right so you got to get real good healthy lean meats in your body healthy meats it's expensive to eat healthy, but it's actually more expensive to not eat healthy. It's going to cost you more in the long run in your life and bad health than it is to pay up that dollar up front to get it. That's how I look at it. You do what you want to do with it. I ain't arguing with you. You know, if you don't like it, stop watching the video. Go somewhere else. I'm just giving you the news. So don't, you know, don't kill the messenger. I'm just telling you what it is, right? And I'm um, not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what it is. It's your decision on what you want to do. But you got to eat lean, healthy meat. So you need that grass fed um poultry uh grass-fed beef grass-fed food no hormones no you know none of all that stuff you know how you see the documentary with the cows with the big holes in them and they just be sticking and pulling stuff out of there because they're producing these cows and these chickens to to give good meat and, or not good meat but fatten them up quick and age them quicker so that they can get out quicker and they're not giving them the nutrition that they need now if the meat that you're eating is not getting good nutrition being full uh, pumped up full of synthetic hormones when you eat that meat all you're getting is their malnutrition and their synthetic hormones and then you're wondering why your eight-year-olds walking around with a triple d right because they're getting all that hormone in them and it's not natural their body's not created for it so you have to watch the meats that you're getting in because it'll throw off the hormone balance even of um, you as well as as your children and it causes a lot of problems and if you go to the doctors they're not going to tell you it's the meat that you're eating they're going to tell you well let me give you some medication and it's going to cause some more problems which is going to cause more problems and then your life is all jacked up and you're wondering why it's because you're eating wrong so go to the source of it and stop it there good good healthy foods eat lots of living um foods and you need to supplement especially here in america even though you're eating living foods it's it's um not dense in the, the nutrition and the, that it should have in it because we're overusing our soil 
right? So I don't know if you have a garden. I garden. I love to garden. I noticed when I started gardening, it was amazing to me that, um, and I did notice this growing up because I ate out of my grandparents' gardens all the time. So I didn't really notice the difference, but as an adult, I did, is that if you get a tomato in a store, it is not vibrant. It lacks a lot of texture, taste, just everything. But you grow a tomato on some good soil at home, that tomato is sweet, it's juicy, it's full of life. Every vegetable you eat that you grow out of your garden and that you're taking care of the soil has a life to it. it I mean, it makes you never want to go to the grocery store again, right? So it, tell, it shows you just even in that the differences in um, the nutrition. That's why they have to put a lot of stuff in this food is because it lacks the taste. The taste that you would get naturally if you just ate natural foods that were produced in good soil and that if we follow good agricultural um, practices. So good, healthy um, food. So we went over what water, chemicals, food, caffeine, um, alcohol. With the food also, supplementation, you need to take your supplementation. It's not just vitamins. We always talk about vitamins, but there's a little bit, you know, there's um, minerals out there that we need as well. So you need a really good source of a supplementation for your vitamins and things like that. Do research on your vitamins, not just your adult vitamins, but on your kids' vitamins too. Um, all that stuff out there isn't really good for you. And some of it is heavy in vitamin C, but it doesn't have all the other things out there that you need. Some of it's heavy, a lot of it is heavy in vitamin B. It's amazing. You'll get a lot of your vitamin B in there, vitamin B12, or maybe a B complex in there, and not in a lot of other stuff. So you really need to watch because you could be taking a multivitamin thinking you're getting a lot of variety of things that you need in there, and you're not. Also, what you need to be aware of is that the um, intake of certain nutrition is different than the in for a man than it is for a woman than it is for children okay so it's not a one vitamin fits all so you really need to look at what is in each vitamin know your body know what you need in there so to know the vitamin that is going to work best for you and if you don't really know what your body needs you're not really familiar with your body on that level you want a good um, multivitamin and I got to tell you that a good multivitamin, I'm not being asked to do this, I'm not being sponsored to do this, but if you want to send me a check, I'll take it because it'll cash real good in my account, right? But um, is a good vitamin is your women's daily or your men's daily. They have a really good vitamin that has a really good um, mixture and it's catered for the man's body and the, for the woman's body. And it doesn't constipate you. But I will tell you, you better take it on a full stomach because if you take it on an empty stomach, it's going to, you're going to feel sick. You're going to feel real nauseated. It's not going to be, it's not a good experience at all. And here's another thing. When I say a full stomach, if you eat a salad, right, you think, ooh, I ate this nice big salad. I'm nice and full. I'm going to take my vitamin. You're going to get sick. That salad ain't enough. You kind of need something heavy on there. So I usually like to do Ezekiel bread with some um, peanut butter on it, something a little bit heavier because a salad is in fruit is just not going to cut it on that. Yogurt is just not going to cut it. You need something heavier on that. But um, that's a really good vitamin. I used to take um, Century and I thought that was a good vitamin at the time, but I found out it really wasn't. It really didn't have all the things that I needed in it. It might be a good vitamin for somebody else, but for my body, it's not a good vitamin. So do your research. Find out the vitamin that is good um, for you, that you need. But you guys, we do these basic, simple things in our life. We can prevent a lot of stuff. We can help ourselves once we're in stuff to get out of it, to maintain it, to do away with it, to whatever your goal is while you're dealing with health issues. It's the same thing as it, that you would need to do to prevent it. It's the same thing you need to do to get out of it, to maintain it, to do whatever. So let's try to add some more of this stuff into our lives. Do what you can do where you are the little bit that you can do where you are. The other thing is that I forgot to tell you is to de-stress your life. Stress is the number one cause of almost everything out there because it, it, it's toxic in your body. Holding in stress, holding in emotions is toxic in your body. So your lifestyle choices is a big part of your health life, right? So you have to be cautious of what you do. You don't want to live a high-risk life, right? There are things that are high-risk life, promiscuality, 
your sexual choice out there, whether you're dealing with animals, same sex or whatever, get mad at me if you want to, but it puts you at a high risk. That's not my opinion. That's like common knowledge, facts. Go to the scientists, they'll tell you. You go to your, your doctor, they'll have it up there. Are you living a high risk life? Let us know. We need That's high risk. So if you're out there doing that stuff, you guys, you're sleeping around, it's high risk. Switching partners like you switch your shoes, that's high risk. If you're living dangerously, living high risk life, driving crazy on the freeway, doing stuff, that puts you at a higher risk because your body is not um, really equipped for a lot of high risk stuff. And if you're doing all that high risk stuff, right, you're going to be high risk in other things. That means you're not taking care of your health. You're, you're, you're living on the edge but you gotta de-stress detoxify your life you gotta let stuff go forgive people move on watching all them scary movies and you all oh, that'll get you all that anxiety all that stuff comes from living that stressful high risk life you gotta learn how to let a lot of stuff go so let some stuff go and be free be healed be whole get out of your stuff but more importantly enjoy your life right where you are hope something in there was helpful for you remember in all things at all times do you until next time bye